minutes one more time and the same song we are singing for the long time in the service what a wonderful song shows us the mercy and the love of god i couldn't imagine if he's not there i couldn't imagine where i will be this time i cannot be standing here if he don't come and hang himself on the cross and pay my price i cannot be singing i cannot be worshiping i cannot be praising we all shall not be here if he don't pay the price on the cross if he don't do what he did on the cross if he don't pay the price his blood on the cross we cannot be here his love is merciful he is wonderful god i love him because he's so wonderful so merciful so glorious this god is so beautiful he sacrificed for the dirt of the earth he made sacrifice there was no other chance there was no other way but only through his sacrifice we receive the mercy we receive the grace and we have received the gift of salvation so we will sing all together everybody involve yourself in the worship and give the best of your worship you have in your heart you are still holding the worship inside of you release it in this place god is here god is in the house and where god is all things everything anything can happen all things are possible in the presence of god unto you unless you have believed 
in vain. Verse number 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse number 4. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. One more, one more scripture I will read before I will make you sit down. The Gospel of St. Mark chapter number 16. Verse number 15 and 16. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we ask the mercy and grace from you. God, your word is already anointed, but I ask the anointing over me to come and to bless my words and to bless my lips and to touch the lips of clay, God. As I declare the good news of Jesus Christ, use me gloriously and mightily in this place. God, let your word has the way. And let your word to touch the souls and to bless every single person standing in the presence of the Lord Almighty. Bless us all. Now all we ask in the almighty and the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You all may be seated. The title of my message, as you have already known from the scriptures, is the gospel message saves the lost. I will talk about the gospel message and the message which saves the lost souls. Every religion have their own message. The Muslims have their own message and the Hindus have their own message. The Buddhists have their own message and the homosexual people, even they have their own message. But we have a special message, and that is the gospel message of Jesus Christ, that there is nobody can save the lost, but only Christ Jesus. Amen. We can only save the lost by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. But what is gospel? We shall see it so more deeply that what is gospel? The Greek word used for gospel is evangelion, means the good news or the glad tidings. You know there are two kinds of news. There is a bad news and there is a good news. And there is a difference between both news. So this is the good news of Jesus Christ that Christ came to the world and he saved us. We are already saved by the sacrifice he has done on the cross. What is bad news? For example, I give you the example that uh, now that Christmas is coming, your employer will say to you, oh, this time you will get the double bonus. So this is the good news for you. But there is a bad news also. The employer can also say to you, the bonus you used to receive in the previous years, this year you will not receive. So the same bad news can become, uh, the good news can become the bad news. This is just an example. Don't be worried, you will get your bonus. The bad news according to the Christian scriptures is the soul who sins shall die. Ezekiel chapter number 18 verse number 20. The soul who sins shall die. This is a bad news. The bad news is Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death. This was the bad news for all of us before. But there is a good news also now for us and the good news is John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The good news for us is Romans 5.8 While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is a good news for all of us. The wages of sin was death but today the wages of sin for us is not death because we are covered by the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and we have received the good news and the glad tidings that the blood of Jesus has raised me and saved me from the sin. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is good news because it provides forgiveness of sins, restores fellowship with God, restores our relationship and our fellowship with God. 
it gives us hope and the promise of eternal life. Glad tidings, the good news, this is the only message can save the lost. I am not against the, the social functions, I am not against the social gatherings or the fellowships, but I want to tell you something, you can just get the attention of the people by doing some social gatherings. Just I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to go where I want to go. That's what just I'm uh, taking is as an example. The Bible talks about the fellowships. It's a good thing. It's not bad. I'm not talking against it. But what I'm saying is the the, the life changing thing is the gospel of Jesus Christ, not the the the, the social fellowships. Amen. The so social fellowships are good in a way that you can interact with the souls. You can interact with the new babies. You can interact. Uh, you can create the interaction uh, with the new souls, the new visitors. But the gospel message is the message that saved the souls. The word of God is the thing which can only save the lost souls. If you agree with me, you can say Amen. Amen. Jesus is talking to his disciples in Mark chapter number sixteen, and the question comes out: Who can preach the gospel? Who is really eligible or capable to preach the gospel? Jesus was talking to his apostles, to his, his disciples, and they were already converted people. They were already have known Christ very well. They already have known what he had done for them. He was already crucified. He was already buried. He was already resurrected. They already had seen the miracles. They already have had known him as Messiah. So they what, what Jesus was talking to them and telling them to go and preach the gospel. He was giving them the authority to go and to preach the gospel to all into all the world. He was not saying just to preach the gospel where the things are fine. Just go and preach the gospel there. And where the things are inconvenient, don't go there and don't preach the gospel. He's not saying that like that. He is saying go into all the world, to all the nations and preach the gospel. And he was giving them the job. He was giving them the duty to go and to preach the gospel. It's not only the job of pastors, leaders, or the bishops, or some other high position people in the church. It's the duty of every, every single convert who is converted, who is already saved by the wounds and by the blood of Jesus Christ, who is already baptized in his name and who already have the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. He is eligible and capable to go and to preach the gospel into all the world. The Christian gospel consists mainly upon three things. The death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. According to the scriptures, what we have just read from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, according to that, the Christian gospel consists of on, on, on uh, three main things. The death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. But as a, as, a, as a believer, as a member of the part of the body of Christ, I will try to add some more things which I can, I can just say as gospel, not as main as death, burial and resurrection, but um, smaller than, than these three things. The pre-existence of Jesus Christ. What is the meaning of pre-existence of Jesus Christ? That before he was born in Bethlehem, he was before that existed into in, into the universe or in the world. How can we prove that? We can prove when Jesus was talking to the Jews and he was talking to them about Abraham. He was telling that he was so glad to see my day and he saw me and he was glad. And they said, what are you talking about? Even you are not even of 50 years and you are talking about that you have seen Abraham or Abraham have seen you. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus was telling them and giving them the sign that I am not now that you are watching me and I and who I am, that is I am. I am from the beginning. Amen. I am the same God of Old Testament manifested in flesh in the New Testament. Amen. If you call me Yahweh, I am the same, same Yahweh existed now even before the world and now manifested in the flesh. So pre-existence of Jesus Christ is also the part of the gospel. The teaching of one God, it's all also the good news for the world because they know God as many gods. They think that God is three or God is two or atheists, they, they feel like there is no God. 
But the God, the one God we preach, it's also the part of the gospel we have. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ through Mary. The holy life he spent on the earth as a perfect man. The incarnation, God in flesh. All the fullness of Godhead dwells in Jesus Christ bodily. His ascension, that he was ascended to heaven after he was resurrected from the death. And the soon coming of Jesus Christ. This is also a good news because the world is waiting for their prophets to come back. The Muslims are waiting for their prophets to come back on the day of the judgment. But nobody will come for them. But somebody will come for us because he was the one who is alive and he was the one resurrected to heaven. Of course, the one who was resurrected to heaven, he is the one who will come back to save us and to take us. The church will fly in the air with Jesus Christ. Somebody said, even I die or even I fly, it's the same. And of course it's the same. Today if we will die, we will die in Christ. And if we will die in Christ, one day we shall be resurrected. We shall be alive. And if we will fly, it's the same. Because we will still go to God. Amen. The, des the, the destination should be the kingdom of God. Even we die or even we fly, it should be the same for us. Paul was reminding then the gospel that Christ died and he was buried and raised again on the third day. And also he's saying that you are saved by the gospel. So the news of the gospel is death, burial and resurrection. And mainly I will talk to you about it in the next few minutes. Why the death of Christ is good news for us? He, he died. He died. He, he suffered so much. They nailed him. They, they, he was slapped by them. He was beaten by them. And why for us is a good news? Because everything he did was for us. Amen. The blood he shed was for us. There was a moment, if he don't die for me, I had to die. I had to be, I had to be nailed on the cross. But he took my place. He took my, my shame. He took my, uh, my burdens and he went to the cross. He took my sin and he went to the cross and paid the eternal price for me. Because the blood of the goats and animals was not enough to pay my sacrifice. So he entered once into the holiest of holies and he gave his own precious blood and he had purchased me. That's why the death of Jesus Christ is a good news for us. What he conquered when he went to the, to the cross or when he died, what, what he conquered? He conquered me, he conquered you, he conquered our biggest enemies, sin and death. We are no more under the bondage of sin and death. If we receive the blood of Jesus over us, even just one drop of the blood of Jesus can change our life completely. This blood is so powerful, more powerful than the blood of the goats and the, lamb, and, and the blood, blood of the lambs and any other thing. The blood of Jesus is good enough, powerful to save us and to give us the honor to become the sons and daughters of the living God. We are free from the slavery of the sins. We are no more under the slavery of the kingdom of Satan. We are free by the power of the blood of Jesus and by the power of the death of Jesus. He died for us. That's why it's a good news. That's why it's a gospel, the part of the gospel for, for us. One third part of the gospel. I told you the gospel consists on three main things. The second, he was buried in the ground. He was buried in the grave. So we, will, we, we can ask the question, how, how the burial of Jesus Christ is also a good news for us? Because he, if, if he die and if, if he don't bury or just, you know, it, it cannot prove that he was really resurrected also. So if we believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus, we have to believe in the burial of Jesus Christ also. The burial is, is important because it verifies that he was really dead. He really died for us. It shows us clearly. And after that, the third one is the resurrection. Jesus stayed in the grave for three days and after that he was raised up from the dead. How the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the gospel or the good news for us? The good news of resurrection is because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and one day he will raise us also. This is the good news. 
The good news is that He died for us and we will not die. Good news for us. Because He died for us, He took our place, so we will not die. He was buried in the grave and we also bury in Him when we immerse into the water and when we baptize in His name. We also bury like Jesus was buried in the grave and He was resurrected. And the good news in resurrection is that God raised Him up from the dead and the same God, the same Holy Ghost will also raise us up from the dead one day and we shall be the way He is. We shall also be glorified the way He is one day. The day will come. In the Gospel of John, the Lazarus friend of Jesus, he died. And the Martha, the, the sister of Lazarus, she was very worried. And Jesus was talking to her. And Jesus was telling her, comforting her, telling her that don't worry, your brother will be okay. And she said, God, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Jesus told her like this, but she was, because she, as a human, you know, we have many worries. Even though we know that God is in control in the midst of the storms, God is in control in the midst of the difficulties, but sometimes as human, we still feel weak. And we say, what, will, what is going to happen? What will happen? So Martha is questioning. He said, uh, Martha answered uh, as the question uh, of Jesus. He said, yes, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So she was thinking that Jesus is talking about the last day or the day of resurrection that yes, he will rise again. She, she thought like that. But Jesus said to her, to her, Jesus answered to Martha, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And then Jesus uh, speaks more. He says, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Amen. Someone said, the person who borns two times, he dies one time. But the person who borns one time, he dies two times. What is the meaning of it? Once we, we born by a natural way, the, the way everybody is born physically or naturally. But uh, the later we born again, we, 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 uh, uh, we take the birth again in Jesus Christ. So the person who, who get, gets birth two times, he dies one time. Because we are born in Christ, so we shall only die physically, but not spiritually. Amen? But if we will just born one time physically, and we are not born by water and by spirit, we will die two times. How we will die two times? Once physically, and second, spiritually also. So the person who borns two times, he will die one time. But the person who borns one time, he will die two times. The eternal death and the physical death also. Romans chapter number 6, verse number 3 to 5. It says, Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So here we see that we are baptized into his death. We are buried with him through baptism. And then just as Christ was raised up from the death, the way he was rose up, the way we will raised, and we will walk in the newness of life after the baptism. Many questions in the minds of the people when we talk to them about salvation or when we talk to them about baptism, we, we, we talk to them, okay, you need to be baptized in order to, to be saved, in order to receive the initial salvation, you have to be baptized in the water. And the people, people sometimes they question, they say, we take showers every day. They, they say like this. Of course, many of us also were like that before. We also have many logical thoughts before. So we were arguing with the people when they used to teach us the Bible studies. They said, we, we take showers every day. How the water can change the life? This is also one of the, one of the questions of the, of the non-believers. How the water can save us? Or how the water can give us the salvation? Or how it can make the difference? I take showers every day. And sometimes the people also say, they say, can you give me the guarantee that after I will be baptized, 
I will, I will, I will be saved and I will, I will not, uh, I will live a holy life. Can you give me a guarantee? Because maybe I will be baptized today and tomorrow I will go back to the sins. And the Bible tells us that we shouldn't be baptized these kind of people who don't believe. How the Bible says us? Because the first scripture I read from the Gospel of St. Mark, Jesus said, Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes is baptized shall be saved. If that person is not believing, don't forcefully baptize that person. Amen? If the person doesn't believe, if he has questions about the water, if he is questioning about tomorrow, what will going to happen tomorrow, or if they question that we will go back to the sin, don't baptize them. Because the process of faith or believing is not completed yet in their hearts. So we should wait for them to be prepared completely and then to baptize them in the water in the name of Jesus. But yes, really the water makes the difference. Really the method, the immersion makes the difference. Really the name of Jesus makes the difference. This is the answer of those questions. When we immerse in the water, when we go inside the water in the name of Jesus, it makes the difference. Because this is the spiritual marriage ceremony be between God and between us. Amen? Amen. Like, like, a, like, a, like a, a bride, when she, when she gets married to, to a groom, she changes her name. She receives the name of her groom. The same way when we baptize, when we immerse into the name, in, in the water, in the name of Jesus, we take the name of Jesus Christ over us. So we don't have any more authority over our own selves. God is authorized of our life. He takes care of our life after we receive His name and after we get married to Him in the water. We don't belong to the world anymore, but only to Him. We transform from death to life. The death has no power over us. The death has no authority over us after that because we belong to Jesus. And of course, this is not the complete message of salvation. This is only the part, initial salvation, the beginning. Later, they have to live a holy life. Later, they have to wait for the eternal judgment and to be saved completely and totally. But they have to pass through this procedure to be born again by water and by spirit. Because Jesus said, even no one can see the kingdom without being born by water and by the spirit. The book of Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 It talks about there is a season of many different things in this world To everything there is a season and time for every purpose to happen on this earth There is a season of everything There is a season to be born There is a season to die There is a season to plant There is a season to pluck there is a season to weep, there is a season to laugh, there is a season to get something, there is a season to lose something, there is a season to love, there is a season to hate. That is what the word of God says. There is a season of war, there is a season of peace, there is a dry season, there is a season of rain, abundance of rain. But gospel, gospel needs no season. It doesn't need any time or any seasons. All the seasons are convenient and all the seasons are suitable to preach the word or to preach the gospel. Amen? There is a season of many other things in the world. There is a season of everything. But gospel needs no season. The gospel message should be and must be preached in every situation, in every place, in every time. Amen? We shouldn't wait for the season to get better and then to preach the gospel. Timothy is writing to his spiritual, uh, Paul is writing to his spiritual son Timothy in chapter number 4 and he tells him, he says, preach the word, be instant in season and even out of season. So we don't have to wait for the good season to come and then to approach to the lost souls. We cannot wait for the convenient moments to happen and then we can walk, uh, go to the soul and then we can preach the gospel to them. Paul says to Timothy, he says, be instant and constant, be ready. Every time you have to be ready and you have to preach the word even in the season 
and even out of season, even in the convenient situations, even in the inconvenient, even in the day, even in the night. This is the meaning. Be instant and preach the word in season and out of season means when the sea is still raging and when the waves are tossing up, that is the moment you have to jump in the sea and to make it calm. Amen. Somebody said that, that don't wait for the water to calm down and then to jump inside. Don't wait for the situation to calm down and then to jump inside and, and, and then wait for the things to, to become okay. You have to jump in the situation when it's still hot. Amen. Because God has given you the authority. God has given you the gospel to preach in the places, in the places or in the times, in the moments when the things are even not okay. You cannot change by your own wisdom. You cannot make the things okay by your own smartness. But you can do it by preaching the word of God, by preaching the gospel because this is the gospel. This is the only powerful weapon you have which can change the souls completely and totally. You are in the prisons, preach the gospel. You are out of prisons, preach the gospel. You are in the hospital bed, preach the gospel. Amen. You are outside the hospital, preach the gospel. Amen. Because gospel needs no suitable time, no Amen. season. Be ready, be instant, in season, even out of season. What is the purpose of gospel? The purpose of gospel is to win the souls. This is the purpose. The purpose of gospel is not to receive the popularity. And we know, we know, I don't, I'm not talking about Greece, but we know the churches, the people, they just, they just, uh, they were preaching the friendly gospels. They were just uh, uh, preaching the extreme grace. And they lost God, but they have a big crowd, just to please the crowd. Amen? We cannot preach such gospel we, just to please the crowd. We have to preach the gospel to win the souls. And we have to preach the gospel to make people enter into the kingdom of heaven. We have to, to make people able to understand that how to live in a godly way. Not in the way the world lives, but the way God tells us to live. What is the purpose of gospel? The purpose of gospel is to describe them. That why Jesus came to earth and what he has done for us. Amen. Luke chapter number 19 verse number 10 says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. This is the purpose of Jesus Christ coming to the earth. What the gospel message requires? It requires a sinner to repent and accept Jesus Christ as his Savior. And what he has to do? He has to pass through the process of initial salvation by baptizing, by repentance, and baptizing by immersion in the name of Jesus and by receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. But the gospel requires love and sincerity. It requires that we have to love the souls. We have to love them like Jesus loved the lost. Once a preacher met a homosexual man he met a gay person on the airport and he preached the gospel to him. He talked about Jesus, he preached the gospel to that homosexual man. And homosexual man, he answered, he, the preacher said to him to repent now after preaching the gospel. Now the homosexual answered him, he said, what can I do? I born as gay. What can I do? I born as gay. And the preacher answered to him, born as gay, because he was the gay, he was homosexual. And the preacher answered him, he said, I don't care how you born like, but you must be born again. You know, the purpose is not, the issue is not how we born like. We came from different places, different tribes, different languages, different colors, different things, different backgrounds. But it's, it's not the issue that how we were born or where we were born. The issue is that we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is the purpose of gospel to, to, to convince the people that they must born again. I reach to my conclusion. Some questions for you. Do you have the gospel? The good news of Jesus Christ for the lost? Are you carrying the light of the gospel inside of you? Do you have the burden for the souls? If you have, reach out to them. The world outside is dying in the sins. Someone from us 
one of us, or many of us, or maybe all of us, has to reach unto them and to carry the light of the gospel to them and to introduce them to Jesus Christ. Because the song says, Win the lost at any cost. Heaven rejoices over the salvation of just one single sinner. The heaven rejoices. There is a party in the heaven. There is, there is a feast there. The angels rejoice over, over just the salvation of just one single soul. Even you cannot compare the soul with, with power or with wealth or with silver or gold. The, 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 um, the value of even one single soul is more than many of the silvers and many of the golds. I will, I will just uh, finish my sermon by, by telling you this, um, this miracle happened in Mark chapter number 5. It's written that Jesus went there in the place called Gadarenes. And in the old times, the name of this place was Gadara. Jesus went there, and when he came out of the boat, a man with unclean spirits, he came to Jesus, and he worshipped him. That is, it's written there. This man used to live in the tombs, in the graves, and no one could bind him anymore, because the spirits inside of him were very, very powerful. It's written that, that many times they tried to chain his feet and his hands, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. They tried to bind him, but he was, he was always free. He, he cannot be there in the chains. No one was strong enough to control this man. And it's written day and night. He was in the mountains and in the tombs crying, screaming and cutting himself. This, is the, this was the situation of this demon-possessed man. And it's written that when he saw Jesus, he came and he worshipped Jesus with a loud voice. He said to him, Jesus, son of the most high God, in God's name, don't torture me. He's, that is what he was requesting Jesus. And Jesus commanded those unclean spirits to go out of him. But Jesus asked him one question. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Jesus asked to this demon-possessed man, he said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Legion. Because... We are many. Few days before I, I told them, before I start the worship, how many spirits are in one legion? According to a, a, a simple estimate, 3,000 to 6,000 spirits are in one legion. When we talk about legion of spirits here, especially in this, uh, in this scripture, minimum 3,000 and maximum 6,000 spirits could be there in that person. So he said, we are many. And now he's begging Jesus not to send them out of that area. He said, he said, a large herd of pigs was feeding on nearby hillside. There are pigs there, so please send us there. I'm coming back to my topic where I was before. So Jesus gave them permission. The unclean spirits came out of that man and went into the pigs. He was free. Okay, he was he was free, but the but the spirits went into the pigs. About 2,000 in number, the pigs were 2,000. Okay, now the spirits were 3,000 to 6,000, but the pigs were 2,000. The Bible talks about it in Mark chapter number 5, you can read about it. Ran into the lake and they were drawn. They were killed, they were, they were, they were dead. But what I want to say is that Jesus did not care for 2,000 pigs just to save one soul. Amen. This is the value of one soul in the sight of the Lord. Go and preach the gospel to the world. You have the light. World is in darkness. You have the gospel. World don't have the good news. But God has given you the power. He has given you the Holy Ghost. He has given you this light to go to the lost and win them at any cost. Would you please stand up on your feet? We will just close our eyes and think for a moment. The song says, win the lost at any cost. We have to reach unto somebody, even one soul. You know, sometimes we say, it's only one soul. Why should I go there and teach the Bible study? It's only one soul. Why should I call and call that person to come in the church? But even to God, one soul is very, very important. Heaven rejoices over the salvation of one soul. 
any soul coming in your mind this time, any soul coming in your mind, and you are thinking about that person to call or to go to him, to her or his house and to invite him to come to the church, please pray for that soul. Just right now, for the next few moments, please pray for that soul. And say to God, God use me gloriously and mightily that I may reach to that soul and to invite that person to come to the church. Even it's here or even in Kriti, Kotfu, wherever, even in Piria for Brother Yanis or even Pakistani brother or sister, any person is coming in your mind, just please pray that God may give you the courage. God may encourage you and give you the power to reach to that soul and to preach the good news and the gospel to that person. Hallelujah.